Welcome back to another episode of Finding Data Friends, your favorite podcast out there about changing shirts that may or may not have been worn on previous episodes. This week, we have our good friend... Hang on. Am I allowed to say that Peter was our friend before? I mean, we've had that discussion before. Spoiler okay, alert. yes. We've known Peter before. But anyways, Peter, it is great to see you. How are you doing, my friend? It is great to see both of you. I am doing fantastic. Um, and I look forward to seeing both of you in person sometime soon. Yes, please. Peter's yeah. event, SQL Saturday Columbus or... Um, is it still SQL Saturday or doing Data Saturday now, Peter? So for 2023, we did SQL Saturday. 2024 is to be determined. I see. So what, what I was going with, my point was um, at back then, for sure, SQL Saturday Columbus, that is where Jess and I met in person for the very first time ever. So cool. Peter made this happen. Otherwise, it would have been another two weeks until Jess would have been a data groom anyway. So, I mean, it it's not that big of an effort you made there, Peter, but still it is appreciated. You definitely made the bigger effort in that case, Ben. You had the much longer flight. A hundred percent. There's that. Much longer trip. I was I was just a two hour oh, drive away at that point. Yeah, I was like twenty minutes. No, I, I would I would <laughs> I would really love to be back on to one of the future events. I, and I don't care what they're being called as long as it's basically the same event. You can you can and title it whatever you feel. You are welcome to come back as soon as your personal schedule and budget allows you to do so. You Thank too, you. Jess. Perfect. Thank you. That's what we're going to do the Ben and Jess reunion episode, Jess, you know? Ooh, smart. You listen. Nice. Um, but see, we're talking about um, our joint past and all that. Uh, Peter, for the people out there that do not know you, for those out there that are trying to make a new friend, who are you? Well, I have been a professional nerd for about the last 30 years. And yes, when people ask me, what do I do for a living? I tell them I'm a professional nerd rather than try and explain what a DBA or anything else I've ever done is. And if they're more curious, they can ask. Besides, they laugh usually when I say I'm a professional nerd. Um, I like that. Reality is I'm a poly nerd. I'm accurate. an amateur nerd as well. You know, I've got all sorts of nerdism and in my family, really, in this house, the, the nerd is strong in this house. Um, you know, between my wife and I and now my children are, you know, following along. Um, but you know, I'm, a, I'm a DBA, at least as of this recording, at a small little, little burrito retailer that nobody in the United States has heard of, Chipotle. Uh, mm, one of my um, favorites. Right. We we even have a couple of restaurants uh, around the UK, Jess, and one or two in mm -hmm. Germany, Ben. Yeah, but it, it I have to tell you, it's not the same thing. No, it I is believe not. That. It's not as good. I, I, I believe it's, that. It's not as good, and it's also, they don't ask if you want black beans or pinto beans. Um, so mm. it, it's, it's the little things. It is the little things. But you know, other than you know, being a professional nerd, and an amateur nerd. Uh, as you may have guessed already, I am married, have two kids, and they are, you know, extremely important to me. Um, and, you know, at, at this point, I'll say I can't say enough good things about Ben um, with the whole nerdy corn thing, because my daughter loves unicorns. And I'm 100% convinced that the unicorn with glasses that is the nerdy corn, uh, the stickers that she picked up when Ben was here in 2019 really helped ease her into wearing glasses in a way that I would not have believed they could have. So I'm, I'm greatly appreciative of, of that. Um, and spoiler alert, uh, I was able to, Ben was kind enough to you know, give me what, send a, one of the Kubernetes shirts. It is her absolute favorite shirt. So thank you, sir. Amazing. Anything that can be fixed with a sticker or and or a shirt, I'm more than happy to be part of. Anything above that might need to be discussed if I can um, make that happen. But if it if it's solvable with a sticker, um, I'm game. Yeah. We got this. Yeah, so I'm, I'm greatly appreciative of that. My pleasure. I mean, you've told me that story before, and every single time I hear it, it, it makes me happy because... Uh, I want to share it with the world, or at least the slice of the world that listens to this. Uh, oh, no, the whole world listens to this. This will be fine. Right. It's a big it's slice. It's a big slice. <laughs> yeah. 
I love that story. That's a really great uh, like side effect of having stickers and a, and a logo, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. So Peter, with you being a professional nerd and a data person, do you have a favorite data nerd thing? So especially I do. from the data world of the nerdy things? I do. And I'm going to take you on a slight tangent. My favorite thing is not really a, it's not a thing per se, it's people. It is the SQL community is my favorite thing about being a data professional. Um, absolutely, hands down, no question about it. The tools are great. The technology is great. The SQL data community, SQL family is in my 30 years of IT experience, hands down, far and away, the best community in technology, both from the professional point of view and being willing to help people. And I would not be to the point I am in my career as a data professional without the community. And also, as I highlighted, you know, with the story I told about Ben and several other things I've seen uh, with other folks, the personal connections as well. So my favorite thing is not really a thing it's all y'all i love it i'm I was gonna, I, i'm it was one of these moments where somebody was kind of answering the question in a way um different than intended but i'm definitely going to allow this answer because uh, I, I could not agree more uh, i mean you you, you you kind of yeah, said that, but it's, it's, it's no that. questions asked community. We're basically just somebody needs something and it is just happening. Even if I may, even if people have never met that specific, yeah. um, just, just thinking back to last year's um, past summit, people wearing a Team Hugo shirt that had never Absolutely. met Hugo before. The year before, Aaron Stellato um, doing that 24 and 24 running for um, mm -hmm. Mela. Obviously, none of us had any idea who Mela was, right. but still, um, thanks to SQL family, Aaron was by far leading that fundraiser, um, doing great things with that. And there have been so many very similar cases. Um, and Absolutely. the great thing about that is not, a, oh, if somebody needs money for anything, you can just post about it with the hashtag SQL family, it's going to happen. No, it's just friends helping friends out, um, just... Right trusting and relying on that friendship. And still every single time that happens, people are like entirely overwhelmed because there is so much more happening than people could ever have imagined. So mm -hmm. yeah, again, um, I will definitely allow that answer. Jess, Thank you. second thought allowed. or? Yeah, okay. no, definitely allowed. Agreed. I mean, I think there's so many of us have, that have stories of not, not being sure about presenting for the first time or traveling to events to even attend, right? And people have reached out and made it a, a place where you can do that and you can be whoever you are and it's a welcome in place. So yeah, it's super cool. It's part of what makes this podcast successful. Hopefully. Well, Peter's got a point because without the people of the community, this podcast would at least starting from, I'm going to say episode five at the very latest get, I'm not going to say boring, but repetitive, if that makes sense. Us Are you envisioning it's data. just, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> just me asking you and you asking me over and over again to see if it's changed. Yeah, but we're wearing different shirts every single time and glasses. So there I you mean, go. It, it's, it's basically totally different episode. Right. It's, it's not even the same game. No. Awesome. Well, Peter, when you're not uh, hanging out with the SQL community and uh, spending time at events and, and with friends, do you have a favorite non data thing? Of course I do. And I'm going to bend the rules here too. I have so many things that I'm passionate about um, that it's hard to choose. You know, there are things that move me to, you know, deep level, you know, I'll call them soul emotions um, that connect with me. I, I love music. Um, we recently went to the Music Instrument Museum uh, outside of Phoenix. This was at the end of a trip where I saw Antelope Canyon and Horseshoe Bend and the Grand Canyon and all these great and beautiful natural things. And the thing I can't stop talking about is the Music Instrument Museum. I love music. I have a background in playing, you know, clarinet, sax, bass clarinet, and some tuba. Um, I was a marching band geek and, and loved it. Still, still love it. 
Um, you know, so I'm, I'm very passionate about the music. I'm also, you know, I'm passionate about food. I'm not necessarily the the chef that some of the folks in uh, the sequel family are, but I like to cook and I like to eat, uh, which is a bad combination for the scale. Uh, <laughs> But it's a good combination for my taste buds. And yeah, we'll get around to, I've got some thoughts on things that I'll, for the food question. <laughs> um, Prepared. So, we like it. You know, and I'm, I'm a sports fan, which is not necessarily the most common thing above, you know, among nerds. And I'm a passionate sports fan in different ways, depending on the sport. I'm a more of the scream and yell person for American football. I'll say it that way for you, Jess. Uh, Perfect. Thank you. Um, and I'm the question the, is that an actual sport, Jess? I'm not, I'm not, I always have it is out. an actual sport, but they call it football, but it's actually hand egg. It's a whole thing, Ben. Don't worry, we'll, we'll catch you yeah. up later. And then I have an entirely different, passionate, and perhaps romanticized view when it comes to a sport like baseball, um, which you know, as this deep generational connection here in, in the states, um, mm -hmm. that I definitely feel, and, and they're two different passions for me, um. Yeah, so that's just a little bit. And there are other things I'm passionate about too. And I could, I'm trying to be careful and respectful of time because I could talk for hours about all of these things. You've all, you both have had conversations with me where I've gone down that path. So I'm trying to be respectful of, of the time structure here. Gotcha. I have questions. Well, first of all, dear data aficionados, this is how we make a band by bringing in people like Peter that even have big band and marching band. Exp I mean, how cool is that? The, the reunion the, party the is just Data getting be band it's getting just better and better up. by the week. Mm -hmm. Still, um, when you mentioned that um, museum in Phoenix, um, I was smiling because we did the exact same thing. Um, we went to Monument Valley, we went to Antelope Canyon, we went to Grand Canyon, um, made our way through Sedona, and I have family in Phoenix, so that's where we ended. And it was one of these days um, where Phoenix was a bit warm. I don't know. No. So it, I don't know how that happened. That's it was, I, I mean, that was in November and was still warm. I mean, it was not 120 as you can get these days, but um, it was still warm. So they were, hey, you want to go to that museum? It was like, well, it, it did not sound super appealing to me um, when they told me about it, but it was like, honestly, given the weather circumstances and stuff, let's go. And we did not make it through the entire museum because it was so overwhelming. Um, yeah, and they were like, yeah, usually it, it takes you like two or three days to fully, I mean, you can walk through that entire thing, obviously, in a day. It's not like it's that big, but there is so much stuff to see. So while I have to say it's, it was not the highlight of our trip, it was an amazing museum, especially compared to the expectations that I had. But even if I had been expecting a lot, it was, it was, yeah, it comes with high recommendations. Good to know. So if you're ever in Phoenix, Jess, and it's 120 degrees outside and you don't know what to do. Good to know. Yeah. Um, either you Keep hang out at mind. Terrence or you go to that museum. I guess that's the two options. Smart. Yeah. I think we should invite Terrence just to, just to discuss these options a bit further. So Terrence, if yeah, you're watching, I was say, you're now on the list. Is she on the list? She is. Now she's on the list. She does, well, she's been on the list before. She just didn't. Okay. Perfect. And, and Ginger as well. Because Ginger True. lives in Phoenix. There we go. It's a party. Which also kind of makes sense because it justifies the long trip that we have to take to get all the way down to Arizona. I mean, it, it's a bit of a trip. It is. I mean, Ohio and you know is what fine, trips do. Arizona's. Trips make, make us, us hungry. hungry. <laughs> and since Peter was already spoiling that he's coming surprised, uh, surprised, prepared, I was so surprised that he was prepared. The opposite that, of surprised. Well, potatoes, pineapple, that's how it goes, I think. Uh, anyway, exactly. Peter, we're not talking about kidnapping anymore because at this point we've established everybody's getting on the van um, on their own free will. So. Oh, absolutely. I, I've seen the videos. You know, I... Another willing victim. <laughs> I'm not even a victim. I'm like, when, when are you all you coming to, to pick me up? <laughs> when are you all coming to pick me up? Uh, <laughs> So I like to cook and there are a lot of things I, I, I enjoy making. And I, I've been th given this some thought. There is a family recipe uh, that would appeal, you know, probably 
to a lot of the Eastern European folks. Uh, heritage wise, I am 75% various flavors of Slavic. Um, and I make this dish called nut roll, which is a bohemian sweetbread uh, with chopped walnuts, butter, and sugar rolled up in it. You had me at so, butter and sugar, me at by butter. the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if, I am, if I'm making something, I'm probably making that. Uh, it okay. also transports well because you know, I also make cheesecakes, but you know those require more cold and you know mm. there's also more yield out of the recipe for the nut roll because it makes six of them as opposed to one cheesecake. Amazing, uh, but and it know, sounds vegetarian, which is good for my friend Ben here. It, it is vegetarian, um, yeah, and it's delicious. The, the challenge will be making it and then getting my wife to allow me to share it with anybody. Mm. But I'll work on that. Because I won't make you negotiate Perfect. with your wife. <laughs> yes. We'll we we appreciate the effort, the extra effort, not just making that for us, but also making sure we actually get to eat some of the food that you make yeah. for us. Yeah, so that's, that's the thing I would bring. Very cool. Awesome. We will... We will make history, Jess, as the very least successful kidnappers ever, because there was not one single successful kidnapping in the history of this entire podcast. I, th I think there was one. I think the very first one, there was an, an essence of surprise. And so maybe that counts. There was an essence of surprise, but I mean, there, were, there wasn't even blindfolds involved or anything. In, no. in the end, everybody just hopped yeah. on the van. Hey, we're friendly people. You are. That's what people think. My interaction would indicate that that's what you've both shown. Perfect. <laughs> and with that, it has been a real pleasure seeing you. I'm very much looking forward to see you in person. I'm going to say in November, Peter. Uh, yes, I will be there uh, as just an attendee this year. But I will be there. Awesome. I'm looking forward to see you, to chat in person. It was really great seeing you. Yeah, it was great you. seeing you as well, Jess. Again, thank you, you for wearing Jess. a shirt, even though I think it was the same one like last week. I'm not quite sure um, the details. Who cares? It's not uh, the same one. It's that. a totally different shirt. I see, I see. Mine is the same one. And with that, great seeing both of you. Thank you, everyone, for attending and watching, and we see you all next week. Thanks Bye. for having me. Bye, folks. <laughs>